Hey everybody, welcome on back to the read through. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's talk about Boolean values. It is often useful to have a value that distinguishes between only two possibilities, like yes and no, or on and off. For this purpose, JavaScript has a Boolean type, which has just two values, true and false, which are written as those words. I believe I added that to the vocab list at some point. Boolean, type of value, which are just two values. Okay, looking good. Comparison. Here is one way to produce Boolean values. Let's go ahead and grab one of these pieces of code. We'll bring it over to our replet. And let's run it and just see what happens. So we're counting about logging three, and then this kind of sideways caret symbol, two. So if we run this, what we're going to get is true. And the reason it's true is because this is a greater than operator, and it's going to compare to see if this is greater than this. If it is, this entire expression is going to be evaluating as true. If it's not, it's going to be false. Now, the other example is 3 is less than 2, which is the opposite expression. Although it's not exactly opposite, because it would have to be less than or equal to. But let's not get into those details. So 3 is less than 2. 3 is not less than 2. So this entire expression is going to be false. We run it, and we'll see false. Excellent. Uh, the greater than and less than signs are the traditional symbols for is greater than and is less than respectively. They are binary operators. Applying them results in a Boolean value that indicates whether they hold true in this case. Strings can be compared in the same way. So we're going to go ahead and compare these two. And then we're not going to really worry about why we get the answer we get. We're just going to show that this can be done. So true. For some reason, aardvark is less than zeroster. Who knows why? Uh, the way strings are ordered is roughly alphabet. Well, we're going to find out why in a second. The way strings are ordered is roughly alphabetic, but not really what you'd expect to see in a dictionary. Uppercase letters are always less than lowercase letters, so a capital Z would be less than a lowercase a. And non-alphabetic characters, exclamation point, hyphen, and so on, are also included in that ordering. When comparing strings, JavaScript goes over the characters from left to right, comparing the Unicode codes one by one. Other similar operators are, and literally that's the last time that we're going to be hearing uh, that about less than or greater than. It really doesn't matter that much. Uh, you're not really going to come across too many situations where you would directly compare two strings using greater than or less than. It's mainly just showing you why certain things happen, and again, creating awareness rather than expertise at this point. So, other similar operators are greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, equal to and not equal to, so we can constant on log these Itchy is not equal to scratchy, this is going to be true. Uh, apple is equal to orange, that's not, so it's going to be false. And again, we're not going to run every piece of code, but we'll run some of them. Uh, and eventually, in later chapters, we might switch over to the non-PDF version, which, if you feel like working through that, it's excellent. It actually provides like a real code sandbox and a way to just click run for all of these pieces of code. Uh, highly recommended. Uh, I'm not because I want people to get used to the Replit uh, interface, but we might switch over to them later, and it'll become kind of clear why. Okay, there is only one value in JavaScript that is not equal to itself, and that is not a number. Um, later on, you're going to find out that you can't do this with arrays either, but since you don't know what arrays are, and you don't really need to yet, we won't really worry about that. So if we constant at log not a number is equal to not a number, we're going to get false. And so it says not a number is supposed to denote the result of a nonsensical computation, and as such, it isn't really equal to the result of any other nonsensical computation. So infinity minus infinity is not a number, 0 divided by 0 is not a number, but we can't say that infinity minus infinity is equal to 0 minus, or 0 divided by 0, because they said so. So, logical operators. There are also some operations that can be applied to Boolean values themselves. JavaScript supports three logical operators, and, or, and not. These can be used to reason about Booleans. The ampersand ampersand, which is this guy, operator represents logical and. It is a binary operator and its result is true only if both the values given to it are true. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to copy this, bring it over to our code on eloquent, or sorry, on replit. Um, so true and false, same idea. We have a value here, a value here, a binary operator which combines them and evaluates them based on some criteria. In this case, we're going to get true if both of these are true. We're going to get false in any other situation. So in this case, we're going to get false. If we change one of these, or sorry, both of these to true, we're going to get true. And in all of the cases, we're going to get back false. The pipe pipe operator denotes logical or. And I don't know, I just call these pipes. Mainly because I heard somebody else call them pipes at some point. <clears throat> Excuse me. The pipe pipe operator denotes logical or. You'll never hear anybody call it the pipe pipe operator, though. I think they just call it pipes, or they just call it or. 
it produces true if either of the values given to it is true. So false or true, one of these is true, so the result's gonna be true. Console.log false or false, now neither of these are actually true because they're both false, so we get false. Not is written as an exclamation point. It is a unary operator that flips the value given to it. Not true produces false, not false produces true, or gives true. Uh, you're gonna see produces, gives, evaluates to, and returns used pretty interchangeably. They're not the exact same things, but they all at this point mean very similar ideas, which is to say the computer gives back to us in some capacity. We see it, we can denote it in some case, that's what they mean. When mixing these Boolean operators with aromatic and other operators, it is not always obvious when parentheses are needed. In practice, you can usually get by with knowing that of the operators we have seen so far, or has the lowest precedence, then comes and, then the comparison operators, greater than, equal to, and so on, and then the rest. This order has been chosen such that in typical expressions like the following one, if, as few parentheses are possible as necessary. So let's go ahead and grab this. I think they probably, okay, they don't. So let's go ahead and take this code. We'll put it in a console.log statement, and that's going to allow us, I think I wrote this down somewhere in our, in our vocab list. Yeah, console.log, a method for logging things to the console and thus making them viewable. So let's have a look at line 67. Console.log 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, and 10 times 10 is greater than 50. So what I would guess is going to happen is that this is going to occur first, then we're going to check to see if that's equal to 2, which it will be. Then we're going to jump over to here and say 10 times 10, which is going to be 100. We're going to compare that to greater than 50, which is going to be true. So we're going to have true and true, and I would proffer that that means we're going to console.log true. Excellent. The last logical operator I will discuss is not unary, but binary. Sorry. I will, the last logical operator I will discuss is not unary, not binary, but ternary, operating on three values. It is written with a question mark and a colon like this. Console.log true, uh, question mark one or two. That's not how you say that. Mainly, I just don't have any idea how to read that out loud. Um, but yeah, so those are two versions of it. Uh, this is the first operand, second operand, third operand for our ternary operator. This one is called the conditional operator, or sometimes just the ternary operator since it's the only such operator in the language. The value on the left of the question mark picks which of the other two values will come out. When it is true, it chooses the middle value, as we see here. And when it is false, it chooses the value on the right. So if we have false, we're going to get this value, which is kind of cool. And I think that's it for this subsection. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.